Let's go over the reloading steps for a bottleneck cartridge. We'll load the 223 Remington. It's one of the most commonly reloaded cartridges. We're going to reload some cases that were just fired out of an AR-15. The first thing to do when returning from the range is to throw the cases into a tumbler to clean off the soot from the firing process. They've been tumbling for 30 minutes or so and should be fairly clean. We have a previously clean batch separated from the media, so we'll use these. Some reloaders will deprime their cases of spent primers before tumbling. Others leave the spent primers in to prevent media from plugging the flash hole as shown here. If you don't have a tumbler, you can use some steel wool to clean the outside of the cases, which works just fine. It just takes a little bit more time. After tumbling the cases, I like to do a little extra cleaning of the case neck, which only takes a second or so with a case neck brush. While cleaning the case necks, inspect the cases for any signs of failure or wear. What you want to look for are really bad dents and signs of case head separation, which will sometimes show up as a distinct line on the body of the case down near the web. Also look for split necks and torn rims from extraction. This step is a good safety check to make sure your cases are in good shape. Next, wipe the cases off with a clean cloth to remove any polishing compound left from the media. This gives you time to further inspect the cases. Now, we want to resize the case to the pre-fired condition using the full length sizing die. Let's put the die in the press and then set it to the right position according to the manufacturer's instructions. We're using an RCBS full length sizing die. We have a shell holder already in the press, so we'll thread in the die. Notice I have the lock ring backed out until the die is set to the final position. The basic setting in most die instructions will let you size cases so they can be fired in almost any gun chamber for that cartridge. This will give you the maximum cartridge headspace and let the case have the most clearance. Raise the ram to the fully extended position. Thread the die further into the press until the die just touches the top of the shell holder. Next turn the lock ring down until it contacts the top of the press. And use the lock screw to lock the lock ring onto the die. This step will prevent us from having to go through the entire process each time for that cartridge and firearm. There are other methods for fine tuning the position of the full length die to achieve minimal cartridge headspace that will allow the cartridge to chamber easily but without excessive clearance. Some of these methods require either trial and error to find the right die position or measuring tools. Now let's position the decapping rod. Turn the decapping rod down so the pin protrudes approximately 3 16 of an inch from the bottom of the die. This position will allow the pin to fully eject the spent primer. After you have the decapping rod position, make sure you lock the decapping rod in place with the lock nut on top of the die. Since we are full length sizing, which includes sizing the body, pushing the shoulder back a bit as well as resizing the neck, we need a little help. We want to put a light amount of lube on the case before we size it. So we'll use a product called Imperial Sizing Dye Wax. We just put a little bit on the body and shoulder of the case. You don't want a whole lot of this since too much can cause dents to form on the case shoulder and body from the compression of the case inside the die. There are much faster methods of lubricating cases than this method. When working on 50 or more cases in one session, a better choice would be to use a spray lube like Hornady One Shot Lube. Our die is set up, so let's go through the steps of the full length sizing process. We've lubed the case, so let's insert it into the shell holder and raise the ram in the utmost position. Now let's stop here with the press handle fully extended. What has happened so far is that the case has been fully inserted into the die, the neck has been sized down a little smaller than the final desired diameter, the shoulder has been pushed back to adjust the headspace amount, and the body of the case has been sized to facilitate easier loading. We also just pushed out the spent primer or deprimed the case. The primers either fall down into a bin or down through the ram into a collection tube for disposal later. At this point, the neck has been sized a little more than the final diameter. We first size the outside diameter of the case neck as the first part of a two-step neck sizing operation. We sized it a little extra to make sure the internal diameter of the case neck for all of our cases is smaller than the expander ball. The second step of the neck sizing operation occurs as we withdraw the case from the die. The size case neck passes over an expander ball that opens up the neck to a diameter that is a couple of thousandths smaller than the bullet diameter. 
This gives the case neck the proper tension to hold the bullet firmly while it is in the magazine or being chambered. It also creates uniform neck tension for each bullet which promotes consistency and accuracy. The bullet grip also affects the pressure we generate in the chamber. Let's size a few more pieces at normal speed. Even with a single stage press, you can see the sizing operation moves right along. After we've sized our cases, before we move on to the next operation, we'll want to wipe the case lube off of the cases. Just use a clean cloth and give them a once pass over to get the lube off. Now that we have a few cases sized to the proper dimension, let's move on. We'll clean the primer pocket with either a primer pocket brush or a uniformer. Let's use a Sinclair primer pocket uniformer to clean the bottom of the primer pocket as well as cut the depth to the proper dimension. We'll do a few of these and then it will be time to check our case length. Okay, the reloading manual indicates that our maximum allowable case length for the 223 Remington is 1.760 inches. We'll use a caliper to measure a few cases and check their actual length against the published maximum allowable length in the book. This one is 1.759. This one measures 1.760, right on the maximum allowable length. This one measures 1.761 and is over the maximum allowable length. Normally, you want to trim your cases either when they've reached that maximum allowable length or when they've exceeded it. Even if only one case has exceeded it or reached that maximum allowable length, we'll set up the trimmer and trim the entire batch. Let's use a Wilson Sinclair case trimmer to trim the cases to the proper trim length. This trimmer uses a case holder that grabs the case by the body taper. It doesn't use case neck pilots like most other trimmers do. The trim length for a 223 Remington is 1.750 inches or 10 thousandths shorter than the maximum allowable length for this cartridge. When setting up a Wilson case trimmer, use a case that needs to be trimmed. We've got one right here. Insert the case into the shell holder by tapping the case head lightly on a scrap block or pad to lock the case in place. Place the case holder in the trimmer and push the case head against the face of the adjusting screw. And then begin turning the adjusting screw so it pushes the case mouth toward the cutter face. When the cutter face contacts the case mouth, the cutter is close enough to begin fine-tuning the trimmer. Turn the cutter and you should either be just grazing the case mouth with the cutter or just missing it. Advance the adjusting screw so the case moves toward the cutter. The thread pitch of the shaft is 16, so one turn is 63 thousandths. Rotate the adjusting screw about an eighth of a turn, or about eight thousandths, and trim the case, and we'll measure it for length. There, we're right at 1750. Now we want to make sure we lock the adjusting screw down. That'll prevent further movement of the adjustment shaft while we're trimming. Now, let's trim a few cases. Always remember to place the case head firmly against the adjustment screw lock the case holder in place, and then turn the cutter until it fully contacts the cutter housing. This process ensures that each case will be nearly identical in length. To remove the case, pop the case out by tapping the mouth squarely on a block of wood or plastic, and then just repeat this process. Now, after we've trimmed all the cases, you'll notice the cases have a very distinctive burr on the inside and outside of the case mouth. That burr will remove jacket material when we seat our bullets unless we remove it first. So next, chamfer the case mouth with a case mouth deburring tool to remove all the burrs from the trimming operation. And we'll deburr this on the inside first and then on the outside. And it just takes a couple of turns of the deburring tool. After finishing this step, our cases are prepped and we are ready to put our components together.